With technology changing with each new day, society has become incredibly dependent on the machinery that is now in use around the world. One of the fields that technology has impacted is the fast-paced medical field, an area that has been growing for the past 50 years yet remains one of the most controversial is stem cell research. But what is stem cell research? It originated in the 1950s when researchers discovered the use of bone marrow for transplants. Although they did not know that stem cells were in bone marrow, they were used in creating new red blood cells. These are now known as the adult or somatic stem cells. The embryonic stem cell was first discovered and derived from laboratory mice in 1981 at the University of California, San Francisco. For human stem cells, the same process that was used on mice was successful on humans in 1998. As of today, there are four different types of stem cells being tested around the world. In addition to the embryonic and adult stem cells, there have been trials using adult stem cells that have been altered, cells from amniotic fluid, and umbilical cord blood. Somatic cells have been discovered in tissues, muscles, hearts, brains, and placentas. Each type of stem cell has been tested for specialized functions. According to Christopher Thomas Scott, who conducts research and was interviewed by NPR, stem cell research goes through three or more clinical phases before reaching the Food and Drug Administration. As of today, there has only been one that is approved by the FDA, and that is the use of embryonic cells to treat spinal cord injuries. The trials that are currently being conducted are geared towards elimination of the diseases that affect society on a major scale. Dr. Darwin Prokop, a researcher at Texas A&M, works with bone marrow and claims that there are multiple clinical trials based on work with bone marrow to generate muscle cells and to treat heart failure. The somatic stem cells that can be altered to perform like embryonic stem cells have been tested to form connective tissue in hearts. The cells from amniotic fluid are under investigation for their ability to test for gene abnormalities, such as Down syndrome and fetal growth issues. Cells from umbilical cord blood are being used to treat cancer and blood-related diseases, such as anemia. As for the embryonic stem cells, some of the treatments under testing include treatments for diabetes, heart disease, Parkinson's, and as well as vision and hearing loss. But why is there a controversy? For stem cell therapy to be open to the public, it needs to pass regulations and be successful in the trials. It takes time and money for each new research project. Because it takes time and money, federal taxpayers and private investors will simply not pay due to the risks of the research not being successful. In 2001, George W. Bush announced that there would be no federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. With the new administration under Barack Obama, in 2009, he lifted the ban and allowed funding for programs. Besides the economic technicalities, the controversy of using stem cells alone concerns religious groups, politicians, and the science community. For the adult stem cells, there isn't much of a controversy, but with the embryonic cells, there is. Embryos that are 3 to 5 days old, known as blastocysts, or large collection of unspecialized cells, are taken out of the female and placed in laboratories to be grown in vitro and later destroyed to insert the cells into patients to be designated and assigned to perform like the cells that are needed. The controversy centers around whether or not that embryo is considered property of the woman or is a human being. But if the research is on the right path to treat diseases that are impacting large numbers of people, wouldn't it be worth the time, effort, and money to find ways to stop these fatal diseases? Think about it. Every great scientific theory or process was considered absurd or irrelevant at the time of discovery, yet the world depends on those scientific findings. So what is stopping our society now from achieving medical progress that so many hope for? The diseases that medical companies are working to stop affect us not only nationally but globally. Diseases like diabetes, cancer, and Parkinson's, as well as tissue and nerve repair are all in the process of being eliminated. But what can be done to encourage or ensure the research and benefits of stem cell use? Contacting officials from the governor's office, House of Representatives, and the Senate can help provide funding for these medical companies. The more the funding, the greater the opportunity to stop diseases, such as cancer, from infecting and destroying the lives of people in our communities. Talk to your elected officials local, state, and national, about raising concern and advocacy to find cures that can affect us all.